Should we play with the drone? Yeah! Oh, I'm afraid it's not a toy, so sorry about now. But, uh, My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris, age 23, to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. We came to visit Chateau Gonville Sauvignon Fleur. Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. In May 2019, we got the keys to the chateau, our new home. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. It's a really exciting day today because after two years of hard work renovating inside the chateau, we're finally starting a new phase of work outside and we're going to start creating a beautiful landscaped chateau garden. It's not like we haven't done anything outside. When we bought the chateau, it was completely overgrown. We had to spend a massive amount of time to clear the back garden, the front garden. There were brambles, there were weeds. And also, do you remember some of the outbuildings, we couldn't even see them. Yeah, it's true. They were so overgrown, we didn't even know we had them. And uh, now we finally reached a phase where we can think at the master plan. And I even have a shopping list for a couple of plants that I want to plant as soon as possible. Yeah, but hang on a second. Before you get too excited, we've got that bonfire that we need to get rid of. All right, let's go and make fire. Okay. What do you think about my outfit? I think you're looking good. You're looking ready for the job. Now this is what I call a bonfire. Yeah, we let it grow a little bit out of hand, no? The, the pile of... Well, the thing is, in the summer, you're not allowed to make any fires here. And in the winter, it was too wet, so that's the perfect season to, to do it. Still, this is so big that we had to call the mairie, the town hall, to warn them that we're making a fire. And they agreed, so... Remember last year when we desperately tried to make fire? There's one thing, I knew we, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't use petrol to make a fire. But I thought it was something like, you know, you shouldn't, there's a lot of things you shouldn't do, but you do them anyway, and it kind of works. Luckily enough, I only used a little bit, but that was enough to produce a huge flame, and I lost my eyebrows in the process. And, and then I called the farmer, Jerome, and asked him to help us. And I think we looked like idiots from the city who don't even know how to make a fire. And he said, well, whatever you do, don't make the mistake of using petrol. And I said, I, <laughs> it's too late. Whoops. Whoops. But then we finished and then we managed and he showed us how to do. And I think now we are ready to make a nice big fire and hopefully it works. I think you might need to light it a couple of other places, no? It's Christmas tree. That works well. Yeah. Let's get more Christmas tree in. Ah. Goodbye, Christmas tree. Oh. <laughs> okay, one more. That's why it's dangerous to use actual candles on Christmas trees. Yeah, 
You have to feed the fire yeah. to keep it going. Yeah. The second Christmas tree. Wow. Uh oh. Okay. What are you doing, Anna, going all Monty Dunn? You're supposed to watch the fire. I know, but there was just some dead leaves on this rose and I just thought it would be like a quick five minute job, you know? And it just looks so much better already. So I'll go back to the fire in a second. I don't actually know how to prune a rose. But Anna, I bought two books about pruning plants, so we just have to eat them. I know. I'm just, I'm just taking off all the dead bits. And then we can properly prune it. Your bonfire wood burning performance leaves much to be desired. Please report back to your master. Please report back to your master. Philip, you're so childish. in the car and we are driving to Lisieux because we are going to a what is it called tree fair we're going to a tree fair very exciting stuff we are planning to start on the garden and we need a lot of trees a lot of shrubs and bushes and apparently this is the oldest tree fair in the whole of France are you excited Philip I'm very excited now that we mapped out all our needs, then we have a list and let's see if we can find any of those plants in our list because what we want to avoid is to randomly buy plants because we like them. That's what I would do. I have a kind of habit of going to the supermarket and coming home with random plants, pot plants that Philip tells me is actually meant to be for indoors and I try and plant it up outside. Philip, did we just get overtaken by a lorry? Yes. You are a bit of a granddad when you're in the car sometimes. So we've arrived in Lisieux and now we need to find somewhere to park with our trailer which is going to be a little tricky. But you can see it's all been pedestrianised. So basically the whole city has been turned into a garden fair. So the parking challenge has begun. We just asked the policeman where we should park and he told us Evre, which is another city. <laughs> so that was not a good sign. Uh, Philip, have you just found us a parking? I think so. I, it kind of looked like a parking. Let's hope. I just need to manoeuvre with the hanger. This is always the fun part, right? Well, I became better. At the beginning it was a nightmare and I would be awfully stressed in a situation like this. And now I'm only slightly stressed. That was really good parking. Philip, did you do it? I did it, I'm perfectly parked. With the trailer, I'm impressed. It's not an easy job. Let's find out if it really was a parking because it was a bit... I hope so. We were a bit lucky there, I think. Such a pretty town.
Philip. What did you spot? Well, we need a lot of hedge plants, but apparently we are kind of end of season, so a lot of people seem to are sold out. We're like, too late. Like this gentleman just said, he's sold out. So let's see if we find somebody else. So we have found what we needed, which is the Mexican orange blossom. And Philip is in the process of trying to negotiate. I'm really happy. Good yes. price. I think 15 euros a piece, no less, 13 euros each. Oh, so you managed to negotiate a bit? Of course. We found five plants from our list. And we found things that we weren't looking for, but we couldn't resist. I'm excited to be here. What's that, Philip? It's uh, egg wars, yeah, and I really love that plant. Hello, boars. They're really beautiful. Can I have some, Philip? Yes. Where are we going to put them, though? Just spotted the flower bulb section. I feel like it, I'm in a candy shop because you get like a bag and then it's like a pick and mix. I'd like to get some ranunculus. I love anemones. How many should I take? I think we might have found our cornice. Is this the one you wanted, Philip? So I think we're taking those three. So the gardening guy just very kindly offered to show Philip where we can find some of the plants that we're looking for. You guys do this, They put two of them so we ended up finding quite a lot of plants from my list. I'm, I'm surprised. The only thing we didn't find is the trees. Somehow ironic being at the tree fair. And now we should go and get some, uh, what do we need? Oh, we need some, what did you say? Some fruit trees. Oh, we need some fruit trees. For your uh, mom. For she my mom. She asked us to get some fruit trees. Apple trees, pear trees. It's my dream to replant the apple orchard one day. So do you think do you think we could buy some apple trees today? So we couldn't help ourselves. We are buying an apple and a pear tree. Very exciting. He's just preparing our apple tree. You excited, Philip? I'm very excited. Do you think your mum will be happy? My first fruit tree, but actually it's for my mum. She wants to plant it. So. She wants to plant it, but actually we will get to enjoy it. Well, she can enjoy it too. Actually, but... it's the other way around. We will have to plant it and she's gonna enjoy it. Philip's just gone to pick up our Mexican orange blossom, put it into the trailer. Philip, the car is pretty full. Look, luckily we don't have the kids with us, hey? So we just have one more thing to pick up, the hornbeam hedge. 300 hornbeam plants, and you know what that means? What? That means that we have to plant 300 hornbeam plants. We've just left the tree fair, but we're not going home, are we? We just can't get enough of plants and trees today. So after spending the whole afternoon at the tree fair, we go to one of my favorite tree nurseries. We found a lot of things, but there were some essential trees missing. And I think they might, we, we might get lucky there. We're going to go in, hopefully get the trees that we need, and then get back because we've only got about an hour before the curfew starts. They also have the most amazing collection of birch trees and yeah, just a nice place to, to visit. It's a botanical nursery which means they have a selection of really really nice plants that you can't find everywhere and they were also really nice to us next and gave us a lot of tips. Beautiful. 
I think it was a good idea to bring the trailer after all. And this is the car. And these are the lovely owners of the Pépinière. Just thinking, did we overbuy? Uh, <laughs> we did get a bit carried away. We were supposed to stick to the list. We did. I think the only thing we bought that was extra to the list were probably my flower bulbs. Yeah, and that's totally legit. And that's okay, but just because you did the list and you wouldn't have thought about, you know, cut flowers. No, I'm not a cut flower guy. So, actually we did okay. Yeah. We just probably didn't expect to get everything. So, these two trees, it's an apple tree and a pear tree, have to go into the ground first because they are bare rooted and they've been at the tree fair for a couple of days, so it's the most urgent thing to get them planted. And I found the perfect spot for them behind our coach house. So let's go planting. This is a bit of a backstage area. You can see the shutter in the background and this building here, this is the back of our coach house. It's a beautiful building and I can't wait to restore that. And here, underneath these trees and brambles, there's another building, sort of wooden stable. You can access it from the other side and it looks like coming out straight of a Blair Witch film. One day I will show you. This is the first time for me to plant a fruit tree, at least a professional one, a farmer grade one. And unlike normally, I read the instructions and it seems to be quite a straightforward job. This is a Pommier Elster, which is a really, really good apple. And the pear is a Conference, which is one of my favorite ones because they, they're quite hard and yummy. Now I need to dig. looking great. You're almost done. Yeah, almost. L-Star. Oh, that's good. That, they're really delicious, these ones. Exciting. So in a couple of years, we will have our own apples and pears. Imagine if we still were together, you could make me an apple tart with our own apples. Well, you have to stay with me if you want some apple tart. Why are you blinking? I just got a bit of tree in my eye when I was seeing the bonfire. Oh no. Yeah. So I don't know, I think I scratched my eye. So I'm stopping for a bit. But I almost, it's almost finished, the fire. Do you think you need to go to a doctor to no. see? No, I'm just going to try and find some, some eye drops to put in it and see if that helps. Do you see everything with a, with a scratch now? Like a scratched lens on the camera? Uh, just feels like a bit scratched. Like I got some, some dirt in it. Oh no. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine though. Yeah. I'm gonna go sort my eye out. Oh yeah, do you need my help? Can I do something? No, it's fine. Oh. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit, my love. That seems all right. I just came up with a really good don't play with the fire jug, but I don't think it's a good moment. Anna would kill me. But just so you know, you're missing out on a really good joke. So it's, mm -hmm. so it's really bad news. I just wanted to show my mom, very proud, how I planted these two trees. And she arrived and they said, nice, but she thinks they are too close together. Because this one will grow eventually up to here. And this one will grow eventually up to here, so they touch. So ah, that was a silly move. Yeah, thank you, Mom.
Philip? Yeah? Your mum just told me what happened. Yeah, it's, it's not funny, don't laugh. <laughs> it's not like us to do things twice, is it? No, never. Lily, you just back from school? Yeah. How was it? Good. You had a good day? Have you seen what Papa's doing? Yeah. He's planting a pear and an apple and pear tree. Why are you doing it? Yeah, that's a good question, Lily. Ask Papa. Why are you doing it? Because I made a mistake. Because I planted one tree here and one tree here. And they are too close to each other because when they grow, the branches they will touch. And then we have pears on this one and apples on the other one, and then the pears and the apple will all get entangled and then they will fall down and then we can't have them and we can't eat them. Oh. <laughs> yeah! And... Sorry, Tree, for being a bit brutal. Second time lucky. The problem is that we're not going to have enough soil here. Why? Where did the soil go? I don't know how it works, but it disappears. <laughs> I dig it out, I put it here, and when I fill it in, there's not enough. I told you, it's not enough. It's very strange. But there's still some here, look. Yeah, that's nothing. Look. Still like a... Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's a mystery. I'm sure there's a simple logical explanation for that involving black holes, parallel universes and quantum mechanics, but I don't know which one it is right now. Or it could be that you've just made a big mess and the soil is all over the grass here. I'm happy with my planting. Tree number one. And barely visible, the faulty tree. No, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> and tree number two. Oh, this is too short. Yeah. Work. I also put down some of this. Now, I'm not sure if it's a good idea. It should be some sort of mulching to prevent the grass from growing around the tree. But maybe it makes the soil too acid. I don't know. Maybe you out there, you have an idea. And please write in the comments if you think I made a big mistake. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. For exclusive videos and behind the scenes updates, have a look at our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching.